Hey everybody, it's the Dollar Boy, and I am so excited to show you the new live action Ariel doll and my customization for her. Just a little under three years ago, before we even knew how Halle Bailey was going to look as Ariel, I did my very first version of her. And today, I'm so happy that we actually have the official live action merchandise. In this video, I will be using Mattel's deluxe version of the new Ariel doll that I got for 35 euros on Amazon. On the back of the box, it shows you a full picture of the doll, and it has a QR code to the soundtrack, which was actually only a 30 second version of Part of Your World, which is already out fully by now. Then on the side, we get the better look at Flounder, who is probably one of the most talked about characters in the entire movie after his film poster went viral. And honestly, that is everything for the box. This doll is meant for people over 6 years old, and it's made by Mattel. I was actually so excited that I wanted to get this doll out of the box right away. It was quite easy to unbox this doll, since it's basically just the doll that's inside the box. The hair color of this doll honestly is quite nice, and I do like her face a lot. It definitely gives us more of that cartoony version of Halle Bailey, with her mole painted above the eyebrows, and this specific version has brown rooted lashes. In her hair, She's got these accessories that are pretty cute. There are some shells, rings, and she's wearing a golden crown. My main problem with this doll though, is that she's got twists instead of locks, and they are only rooted in the part line. Everything else is just rooted with normal loose doll hair. It is rooted pretty nicely, but for this doll, I was really hoping to see something that better represented Halle's hair texture. And even though we do see quite a lot of loose hair in the trailer, especially in the underwater scenes, I don't feel like this hairstyle is a good translation of that. Which is why I already prepared myself and got some mini locks on AliExpress. I will be adding some loose hair in there as well but these locks will definitely be the main base of this hairstyle. Just to quickly explain to you, in case you're not familiar with my channel, I love customizing and rerouting my dolls, so the main reason I bought the deluxe version of this doll is for the articulation in the doll's body and her fabric outfit compared to the plastic tail on the cheaper doll. Ariel has movement at the head, shoulders, elbows and wrist, as well as the hips and knees. Unfortunately her feet are not part of the mermaid tail, and I'm honestly not sure about the reason behind this. We can take off the tail, and underneath she's got sculpted underwear on, and has two nice human legs. The tail is very nicely done, with these printed fins, as well as some tool layering. She does not have a full back fin, but there are some smaller fins on the side of the tail that look pretty adorable. Her scales are painted in silver, and in between them you can see that green to pink ombre color. And the doll comes wearing her iconic purple top, that also has some silver painted details, and tool on the top. My main problem with this doll is just that hair, even though she does come with those painted on baby hairs, and I do like the fact that both the doll's hair and the twists are crimped, so at least it's not fully straight. Now I just take off the accessories from the twists, because I do want to keep those and reuse them once I'm done. And once those are off, I go in and cut off all the original hair as short as possible.
with all that haircut off, you can see that she does have a very nice rooting pattern. I'm now dipping the head into a pot of boiling water to soften up the plastic so we can easily take off the head from the body. Normally I use my forcep plier to take out that leftover hair, but today I couldn't find those, so I'm simply using tweezers to scrape the inside of the head to pull everything inside and then pull all those tiny pieces out of the head as well. In this step I was trying to be really careful of those rooted lashes, but I filled miserably and still pulled them out. Then to start the reroot process, I cut the lock in half because I don't need all the length, because they originally were very long. I bought these giant needles, so I'm trying to press that lock as flat as possible so I can push it through the eye of the needle. Once that is threaded through, I take the head and as you can see I already did two test strands. I'm leaving about two holes in between each lock on the hairline. And then I just push the needle into one of the existing holes and find my way out through the neck hole. To really get that needle out, I needed to grip it with a pair of pliers. And then I simply tie a knot at the end of the lock and pull it back from the outside which honestly keeps it pretty secure. Off camera, I repeated this process for like a hundred times to get a full head of locks. I mainly focused on the hairline and part and spaced out the other locks in the middle much more to prevent the hairstyle from getting too full. This does leave more room for bald spots, but for me, the way this doll looks from the front was more important. I now decided to put the head back on the body to see how it was looking for now. Initially, I wasn't able to put the head back because of how long that neck back was. So I decided to trim that down. And this made it much easier to put the doll back together to reveal this halfway stage. At this point, I wasn't too thrilled by how she was looking since it was all very poofy and messy at the roots. To make this look much tighter and neater, I went ahead and twisted each lock around itself and held everything very tight and flat to her face and then dipped the top in boiling water. Since I was pretty nervous and unsure for this step, I unfortunately didn't film it, but it ended up working perfectly and gave me the exact result I wanted. This way you can see it lays much flatter and more realistic. However, it did give me a lot more baldness showing on the top and in the back. But I do feel like we can slightly fix this and make her more movie accurate at the same time. I already laid down strands in a mix of brown shades that I wanted to add in between the locks. One thing I did really want to pay attention to in this step is to make sure that the hair will be easily separated from the locks. Though it isn't too hard for me to only take the loose hair and brush or style those, preventing the doll to get messy and tangled up hair. To ensure this, I'm working in straight rows just between the first row of locks. This placement also helps me in camouflaging those bald spots just a little. Just like in my previous reroutes, I'm using my reroute tool from the Doll Planet hair for this step. I loop a strand of hair around my finger, pick it up with my reroute tool, and tighten it around the needle to create a small knot. Then I find a spot on the head and push it into the existing hole. And that's the first strand in. Using this looping technique also keeps the hair in place pretty securely and especially with the locks that I've used, the loose hair will cling to the lock inside the head, which is why I feel confident enough not to add any glue on the inside of the head this time. 
I keep repeating those same steps on both sides of the parts and in the lower back of the hair until I'm happy with the amount of loose hair I've added. After getting the hair done, I also wanted to give the face a little update since her face paint is quite pixelated. I am not the best at repainting dolls, so I didn't want to risk ruining her entire face, but I did feel confident enough to paint her lips. For this, I'm mixing brown, red and white acrylic paint together to get my desired lip shade. And then I use a skewer or toothpick to paint on the actual lips. Initially, I tried to give her some teeth and that miserably failed, so I did go in for a second try, this time keeping the closed mouth that was a much better fit for her face coat. I am so happy with how this Halle Ariel turned out, with the mix of locks and the loose hair like this. And I also bought the Disney Store version, which I'm very excited about as well. I really love her more realistic face as well, but I'm just not sure if I should give her the exact same hair I gave to this Mattel version, or if I should try a different way to get a similar look, or if I should do something completely different. I could really use your help in this decision, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I also do feel like the original Disney Store hair is a bit more of an orange color compared to my Reroot, but looking at them side by side, I think my color might be a little more movie accurate. I really hope you like the result of my Mattel Ariel transformation as much as I did. If you do, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see my upcoming restyles. To see more pictures and looks I create with this doll and all of my other dolls in my collection, also follow me on Instagram, at the doll boy. See you next time!